Okay, folks, today we're going to talk about tan up tube flies, ideal for sea trout, salmon, predator, saltwater fishing. Um, we're going to talk about the types of tubes, talk, talk about um, different weighting tubes, how to add weights, and even the types of adapters and how you can tie your own flies on tubes. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is adapters. So uh, most people just have a general fish. You can get a tube fly fish, but most people use adapters. So this first adapter is a, it's a cheap one. You get off eBay for a few pounds. Most people get it for their first adapter. Um, so you just clamp it in as normal and it comes with these kind of needles, a few different sizes. And what you do is you add your tube up the needle and then put that through the adapter. And what you need to do is you need to pull this tight and then turn this and that basically holds it, it clamps it so you can tie. The only problem with this is, and this is the fault, I really don't like time this adapter is, you get the thread spinning a lot so if i add on a bit of thread here and then say for example i'm adding on a bit of material and i tie and I tighten down it'll actually sometimes spin so i don't know if you can see that in the video but the tube fly can actually spin so i wouldn't invest in one of these adapters so we'll just take this one out of the face and i have another adapter here um this is based on the hms style adapter um this is a an off-brand kind of one but you can get the HM, HMH one if you want and the beauty about this there's two ways this can add add the tube fly so if I take my tube and it's probably the easiest way especially for larger tubes is you can actually unscrew this and add your tube directly onto the adapter and clamp it down and that means however hard I press on the tube it's not going to spin as you can see it's not going to spin the only issue with adapting it this way is you're giving up a bit of the space for the tag um, obviously you'll use a bit of junction tubing but you're probably going to have a longer bit of junction tubing um, it's okay for the larger tubes but for small say you know half inch tubes it's not so good so what I would do in that case, let's say for example, I'm gonna just cut off a bit of tube in here. Let's say I have a, a half inch plastic tube. So this is one that I just cut here. You can actually use a pin to support it. So you would actually put the pin in, and what you're doing is you're clamping the pin and the pressure of that little ring pushing down on your pin gives you a very good hold in your tube fly and that's good because you can actually see that through the clear tube and again you have a very good grip so that's the second option um another option is you can actually get like i think future fly make them where they're actual pins and you push the fly up to a certain point and it holds the pin i don't have one of those myself but what i also use is felting needles so again, you get these for one fifty in a craft shop, two pound, and you get them in different sizes, but they can also help hold the tube flies. Um, I actually would use these for very small mini tubes, like maybe a quarter of an inch plastic, where it's very thin diameter tubes, and they're just lost in a tube fly adapter. So um, that's the three that I would use, but mainly ninety percent of the time I'd be using this one, which is based on the HMH. Okay, so now we're going to talk about types of tubes that you can buy. So um, the heaviest you can buy probably tungsten, but what we most people tie on would be the heaviest tube would be copper um, so very heavy but it's not tarnished it's not shiny as such um, but a very common tube to, fly, to tie on then the next one would be and it's a wee, as you can see the difference it's very very much more a gold color would be your your brass tubes so that's what i was using earlier in the video brass tubes and then as well as that you also have your stainless steel tubes um so again or aluminium tubes sorry um, and aluminium is very light, very strong, very light and ideal for different parts of the water level. So I would use aluminium just below subsurface for the likes of uh, sunrise. Um, you can also use plastic tubes as well and it's a great way to add different colours. So you can buy all these fancy tubes. Those tubes are actually part of, you buy water balloons, kids have water balloons and you get these tubes with them. And they're ideal because they're, I think they're 1.8 millimetre outer diameter. So. The plastic ones you can get um, flexible 
um, plastic tubes. So again, whenever you're cutting them maybe an inch long, they're not going to be too flexible. But again, you can pick different tubes. It adds a wee bit of colour. Tie it up to yourself. But um, yeah, so then as well as your basic tubes, then you have different shapes of tubes as well. So most, as I showed you earlier, most of them are, are just straight barrel tubes like that. You can also get tubes, um, like these are bottle tubes. And they have a little flange and they change almost like a, a skittle type and that's another type of tube itself but the shape can change and you can also tie directly to the top of that and you don't even need to you know uh, put on a body so um, and it's also got a different diameter for the rear for your junction tubing so very handy um, there's also a series they're getting quite popular now this is the pop rivet um, you can color up the head but this is what I would tie on quite a bit but basically it's an example of a flange so you can buy tubes with a flange um, it stops the, the head uh, or the thread rolling over the head, but as well as that, it'll help balance it out a little bit. Okay, so it's very important to, whenever you're tying on metal tubes to have some kind of liner. So this is the bottle tube I showed you earlier. As you can see, it's it's all brass, but uh, imagine if you got that snagged on a rock, and you had say thin mono, maybe you know twelve, fourteen pound mono, and striked it. You know you could actually cause a wee bit of. Uh, fraying and a wee bit of irritation to the, the tube. So what we do is we put in liner tubing and basically this is this could be one and a half to two mil outer diameter and this just goes in to the tube. What you would do is you would just cut a bit off and then you burn a little bit at the top and that would actually hold your tube and you do the same at the end as well. That means that your line is actually hitting the plastic tube and not the metal tube in case you had a big fish and it frays. So again, most people, unfortunately, whenever I would see videos on social media a lot of, or photos on social media, a lot of them actually wouldn't have this liner tubing. But for the sake of an extra few seconds whenever tying the tube, it's definitely worth investing in. Okay, something else you're going to need whenever you're tying tubes is to actually have junction tubing. So this is soft silicon usually and it goes over the end of your tubes. I'll just show you, this is obviously the head, but for demonstration purposes, it goes on a few mil on your tube. And then, what it is, is you can actually use that then to adapt and put on your hook. So, like I showed you in the fly earlier, this is a willy gun. That's your junction tubing, and it's holding your fly. Okay, you can, as you said, you've, you've got different colours of junction tubing, so that's clear. You can get red, you can get green, but it's a really good way to add a few trigger points. So say for example you have a, a green butt, you can actually just tie it up as a stoat's tail. But then you have the variation of a stoat's tail or you can add a green butt onto it just by that there. So um, another thing about junction tubing is that you can tie it on. So what I could do is whenever I'm tying the flag, put it on this tube now. Okay, so I'd push this a few mil up the rear of the tube. And then I could actually, whenever I'm tying it on, I could actually put on some thread wraps and glue and make that permanent um, but it's ideal for the likes of the smaller tubes but what I do is I want to make sure that it can slip off because if it slips off say a fish grabs this it can pivot on the it can use it as a bit of an anchor the on hook whereas if it grabs it and the sleeve comes off the tube fly goes away and you're only messing with the hook then so just bear that in mind as well okay so I'm going to talk a wee bit about cones here so Cones come in different shapes and sizes, so here you just have your, your basic gold cone. You can have fluorescent orange ones, you can have a um, mix, so this is actually orange and black. There's tungsten as well. Um, I have some perforated cones, so again water comes through the cone and um, you know hits the materials. So there's a range of different ones. The use of cones is very important, so for example this is obviously a weighted tube, but if you look, going back to the willy gun that I showed earlier, if you imagine that's a plastic tube, you're going to have maybe a, a large double or treble there that can actually offset. So your fly is fishing like this if you're having a plastic tube. So if you use plastic tube and actually use a cone, it can actually level out a wee bit so it fishes more level as opposed to um, do diagonally. So something to bear in mind. So cones, what I would advise is if you're using cones, make sure you get the right cones for the right tubes. So it's very easy to get tubes that are too small or um say for example a three mil tube that um but most people tie on you're not going to get a a, a cone onto that there you, what you can't do is you can tie directly on to the liner so this is this is actually a two diameter um cone or two diameter 
um, tube, but unfortunately, even that is too thick for a cone. So what you would do is, you could obviously tie on a smaller diameter tube, like one and a half mil, um, but it's obviously prone to breaking without that support. So what you could do is you tie your fly on it, and then you would actually use your liner again. So just imagine you tied this, then you run your liner through the tube. Okay, so that's your, your liner. And then you would actually attach the cone to the liner. It also means, it's very easy whenever, you know, you're taking a big risk to add the cone on last with the whole fly. Because if you mess up, say for example, you have no more space to cut the end off, you're going to cut off part of, the, part of the wing. But even if I mess up adding on the cone, I just take it out, add in another bit of liner and start again. It also means, say for example, these cones here, I think these are Emer or something like that there, but um, the way they're coated, they're lovely colours, but after a few days fishing, they start to chip. I don't want to have to tie the whole flag in. So I just, again, just remove the liner, add in another bit of liner, and add in another cone. So that's something to bear in mind whenever you're putting in cones. Um, another wee thing, and I've said earlier, is the pop rivets. Do check those out because that actually has a cone built in. It doesn't mean it means you don't have to worry about adding it and getting the right size. Um, and there's a few videos um, within the channel there to talk about tying on these pop rivets. They're maybe three or four p a rivet as well, so they're cheap. Um, so yeah, another thing is whenever you're checking out different um, tubes, I would advise getting a pack. So I know fly makers. I I got a pack from fly makers from a few years ago. The covers. You know, your tube lining, your outer diameter tube, your flexible tubes, your non-flexible tubes. It even had cones. And it's a good way just to get to know them all. And in time, you'll have every brand and every every um, width they match. But just for now, if you're starting out, just get a wee pack. Um, folks, if there's anything else throughout the video that I didn't answer or any questions, do drop them in the comments below and I can help. Because I know tube flies are a bit of a jump from hook flies. But it gives you that versatility. You know, like you're not, you're never going to get the weight of a, a hook fly as you would with a, a one inch copper fly and again likewise if you're using a full floater and a quarter inch mini tube you're going not right in the service that a hook fly can't so again it, it, it broadens your horizons broadens your skill set and it's more uh, more arsenal really for for salmon fishing so folks thanks very much for watching and hopefully you found that useful as always if you did hit that subscribe button like the video and hopefully see you next time all the best